Okay, hello and welcome back to um, lecture two, part two of uh, the development of the USA uh, from 1930 to 2000. I uh, hope you enjoyed the last one. Let's move on. We left it with the consequences of America winning and becoming rich and powerful um, after being successful in the Second World War. Um, okay, so this creates um, an affluent uh, society for America from the, the end of the Second World War onwards. And from 1945, America enjoys an unprecedented uh, prosperity. Uh, it really does. Um, as I think I mentioned in the last lecture, it uh, its businesses and its industries thrive. Um, it sets up. Uh, it certainly have ga it certainly has gained global territory um, and influence on other nations and other continents. And if we take that back home to the actual domestic. Um, for home life for people in America, this has a very positive effect on the majority of America, but certain the 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 the, the, the middle white class Americans. Um, it, this is important, and it's an important distinction to make if you if you are, are writing about this in any exam or any essay paper. Um, kind of going off on on a bit of a tangent here, but um, one of one of us. Uh, one of the main things that us historians would like you to acknowledge is that um, there are society is built up of certain groups and certain ones uh, when events take place either gain or are perhaps persecuted or perhaps uh, are deprived or prejudiced against. Uh, not everybody wins in history. Unfortunately, uh, there has to be your winners and, and your losers. OK, um, so basically the home life of America. Sorry for digressing there. I didn't intend to, but I always will. Is the home life for America um, in general is everything is going to be okay and this this is kind of reminiscent of uh, the roaring 20s okay um let, let, let let's talk about uh how these wh white middle class americans um receive a brighter future and a comfortable lifestyle um it's publicized as i've mentioned uh the the, the winning of the second world war is published was publicized by uh brand new ways of advertising um through methods of movies uh radio and um and and music yeah um another thing we can look at perhaps quickly is or consider rather than look at is how america is envied by other countries uh, during this period because america is the only nation that really um comes out of the second world war with any any sort of gain be it psychological financial or territorial um okay um let's move on uh, Churchill actually states at this, this period in time that America is at this moment standing at the summit of the world. Okay. Um, now, we'll talk about the post-war booms. Um, we mentioned the economic boom, but there's other things to consider here. The United States was the, was the world's strongest military power, so it had a military boom. OK, or, you know, or power boom, if you will. It just simply gets more powerful. Uh, remembering that it has dropped two nuclear um, atomic bombs. And uh, there, there's also as much as there is respect for America or uh, there's, there's certainly a lot of fear. OK, they've done it. They, they, they have um, annihilated mass amounts of civilians. OK, uh, if they believe the cause to be right. So. Moving on, its economy uh, was also booming, and the fruits of this boom uh, are, are really shown because there are new cars. Uh, there are these uh, the the suburban houses are built, um, the Levittvilles. But what we will and there's also a rise in other consumer goods. Sorry, here I'm almost reading parrot fashion uh, off the slide, which I hate to do. Um, but but these 
these sort of cons consumer products, and we will be talking about consumerism, um, are much more readily available. Uh, simply because, as I said, the if we can take it back to Henry Ford with his production line uh, systematic approach of building the the you know the Ford cars, um, we looked at it again uh, in the, in perhaps that first lecture of America's uh, mass production of um, the aeroplane. If you can remember Goring, um, commander of the Luftwaffe, said to Hitler that there was no way America could produce those many planes and that America should stick to perhaps just making um, razor blades. Uh, but no way could they contend with that sort of demand for the aeroplane. And um, under Roosevelt, uh, and uh, under Roosevelt sort of promise, they, they exceed that. Same with same with the boats as well, the ships. Yeah, they create a, a naval fleet there um, to supply the, the war effort in the Second World War. Um, we can also take that principle of this production or mass production on the production line and we can apply it to these obviously the brand new cars that were coming out uh, but the suburban houses yeah uh, these were certain sinks and white goods as they are known such as your refrigerators your televisions all of these are mass produced and readily available so which means that people can afford them yeah so we will move on um, to consider another boom which was the baby boom uh, where I mean to be honest if you stop to think about it you've got a lot of these population um, or a lot of the population of America the white uh, middle-class Americans are rich comfortable and as we will discuss they move into suburbia or suburban areas um, if you can appreciate during the Great Depression of the 1930s, there was this sense of uh, no point in having children. Tomorrow is 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 dark. Now America is facing a the future is bright kind of uh, Zeke Heist kind of spirit of, of of the moment. And yeah, let let let's we've got the money. We are again top of the world. Let's let's produce big families. So bye. Um, the early 1960s, okay, there's a 77 million population increase. So there's there's 77 million more people living in America, okay? So, and, and that's basically in a 20-year in a span. Another thing is perhaps celebrating the success in World War II. Um, let's live for today, okay? And, I mean, as you can see, these babies spring up and populate America okay in perhaps the suburban areas still in other parts of America um, there are those which are not that comfortable not that fortunate and we will be discussing those later but let's take a, uh, a desperate look at the desperate housewives perhaps in um, in suburbia uh, so that as, as I've aforementioned, uh, the baby boom and the suburban boom went hand in hand. Yeah, um, it was, uh, there we go, the Levittown or the Levittville. Um, these can be quickly constructed and just to get a sort of feel of that, uh, th they're idyllic. OK, these are the, the it's kind of creating a euphoric paradise um, uh, just at embodiment if you will of what is the american dream okay um a shangri-la i was going to say then but uh maybe that's taking it over the top here you can see i mean if, you, if you're not familiar with what suburbs are perhaps because you don't you know you're too busy driving around you don't get to see witness them from an aerial view but this is the type of view that you would receive from above and as you can see Nice grass lawns and and um, an excellent place to live to raise your family and your children in a safe environment where you can love thy neighbour and your neighbour can love you too. Um, maybe when the husband's at work. But what I am going to say is uh, these places increase the population even further. Okay, um, the the actual. 
um, places such as these these Levitt towns or these Levittvilles earned themselves the nicknames of being um, perhaps the uh, Fertility Valley um, or uh, the Rabbit Hutch Town, okay, because of the, the shall we say, happiness there, which... Um, entitled the the parents or the families to 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 remain happy and to create more children um, so it really is a picture perfect lifestyle um, and it's important to to mention here that by 1960 25 percent of white middle class americans lived in this type of home okay now as you can see i've added some images here just so you you probably have seen these of the 1950s um soap uh soap sud or serial uh television programs um where it, it is everything is bright bright painted colorful uh it represents the the wife learning domestic skills if you will Okay, if we look here, um, this is 191950. So, I mean, it still encourages women to go out uh, and to earn money. You know, they're still working in perhaps factories and women are so certainly um, working in the, the consumer goods. Um, but on the whole, this is the kind of picture that America expects its middle classes to follow to conform to okay if we just make a, a couple of points of these suburban houses they were affordable to the newly married couples okay um again they were allowed to move out into these suburban areas because cars or transport was not a problem there was no problem in commuting um or, or, or driving rather back and forth from the suburbs into the cities okay so there really isn't this issue um, that some other Americans that are actually in the cities uh, which still have poverty and we'll be um, we'll be looking at the the black Americans or the afro Americans um, that uh, are not included or provided for later in the in these lectures but just for now we're concentrating on the white middle classes and how they really um, <clears throat> are in a um, an excellent um, improved condition and have plenty of opportunity to lead a comfortable and happy life okay um, as, as I've noted here, I've tried to include a lot of it. Cars are a big thing. You can see you have the television. We'll be talk, going into more depth about the television, and boy, that, that, that's interesting. Um, some of these pictures are not unlike the Nazi propaganda pictures of what was expected um, of the family unit. I mean, you know, if we, we look here, uh, the mother with uh, one, two, three, four children, um, the father sat around a television in replace of maybe um, a Hitler speech on one of his cheaply produced radios. Um, but as I said, history, you can always draw parallels. And I hope at this point, seeing as it's the last module on the course, that, that you'll be able to do that. But try and remember, that's something that you can do for maybe enjoyment. Um, you would be able to mention something like that in an exam, but I wouldn't spend too much time. Stay, and this is perhaps I should have a little thing popping up here, exam tip. Stay very, very close to the source, the primary or the, uh, or the secondary source that you were working from, because... It is a separate time. It is a separate country. Okay, um, it would show uh, own knowledge to mention it quickly, but I, I, you know, we really don't want to be reading about Nazi Germany if we're reading a paper or an exam um, submission on the development of America. Okay, but sometimes it's worth making the statement because it's uh, it's all part of the tapestry of history. Moving on. We shall have a look at the consumerism or the keeping up with the Joneses. Um, so as, as I've already mentioned, I'm going ahead of myself. These, these are included. Uh, these homes included all of the mod cons or, as I said, these are the, the must have 
status symbols of success in America. Swimming pools, um, television sets, radios, uh, washing machines, all of these sort of products that, I mean, nowadays you can look, it, you, you're judged by the size of the TV that's on the wall, yeah, or perhaps the latest um, sat nav you have in your car, or the, the cars have always been a symbol of success. Uh, we can kind of go back to Chaucerian times when we think of who had the better horse. Obviously, if you had a better horse, it meant you were a wealthier man. Um, so, likewise, if you can appreciate that to demonstrate your success, or how powerful you are, uh, be it in the workplace um, or successful as starting your own business, all of these would show to your neighbours how wonderful, how successful and how hard perhaps you have worked and these were your rewards, okay? So we could turn our attention even though um, and I'll be wrapping this up kind of quick, this, this, this part of the lecture. Um, even though you have that, that the suburbs where there's 25% of American families live in there, we still have to appreciate um, that the luxury and the, the, this convenient lifestyle was not readily or made readily available for everyone. Okay. Um, and here we have uh, a stat where... By 1959, 29%, so that's nearly a third of the population, okay, 50 mil, so we're looking at 150 mil, or, or perhaps just, uh, just under that, um, lived below the poverty line, okay? I quite like what I put here. Um, we, we can kind of, if, 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 we're, um, if we are discussing who these neglected or deprived people were, um, you'd be looking at the, um, uh, perhaps the, the rednecks or the hillbillies from the Northern mountains. Okay. Um, certainly perhaps down in the South, we have, um, another type would be another type of group would be your Hispanic workers. Okay. Which have come from Latin America. Um, such as places such as Mexico and further south and they moved up and they, they go to the west of America to work on the land okay remembering that the, the, the east coast of America is more city driven and as you go further further over to the west it becomes more um, agricultural and rural okay um, so here we have massive amounts of land which are, which are worked upon by by Hispanic workers. Uh, very little wages, as we can see here with the, the redneck family or the hillbilly family here. Um, not provided for, okay? Not considered. Um, it's a kind of lifestyle that isn't uh, always kind of frowned upon, okay? And finally, we have um, the black Americans or the Afro-Americans. Um, another another group which I haven't put on this slide is certainly the Native American as well. Um, but that's that's something that I will go into into more depth. Uh, the the tragic um, history, um, but it isn't necessarily um, something I can quickly go into here. But what we will be focusing on is because part of this the these lectures is going to be um the fight for civil rights and the attitudes between uh between the people of america and um the politics of america uh when it comes to civil rights okay so as you can see ghettos here are where the majority of black americans placed okay and we will see how this creates tension um crime uh violence and rioting um which still happens to this day however we'll be going into that in more detail so that really is the other side of america um the darker other side of america um and as I've mentioned here, it is a tale of the American dream for some, 
For many more, it is a story of exclusion and of isolation. So I hope you enjoyed part two of this lecture, and I'll continue in the next part. See you all then. Thank you.